Guys, welcome to a very special episode of TFL Talking Trucks. As always, I'm Andrei Smirnov, and today um, it's all about truck design, and I have a very special guest. This is Ihab Kaud from Ford, and he's the chief designer for Ford North America for trucks. Ihab, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. You have now tuned into TFL Talk, where we discuss everything automotive, whether it's cars or trucks. This is the one place where you can be sure to get independent and honest reviews. Let's get back to the show right now. So, yeah. So uh, this conversation is about one of your latest creations from your team, right? Uh, this is the third yeah. generation Ford Raptor that's coming out you know, this year. Um, it's a very special truck. But you also have a kind of a long history with trucks, right? Uh, yes. At Ford. Yes. So I wanted to kind of ask you kind of uh, a little bit also about kind of where the trucks were and where they are now. Mm -hmm. And well, first of all, I, I started with Ford Motor Company at the end of 93. And actually, my very first project was uh, in trucks. Okay. Um, the uh, the first uh, Super Duty that we brought out in uh, 1998, 99, um, that was the first time we separated the F-150 from the Super Duty. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, my, my first project was on the interior of that. And then I ended up in Germany, came back to commercial vehicles again, working on Transit, Transit Connect, and then uh, went to England uh, and came back uh, working on, uh, on vehicles like the Focus again and, and, and so on. Then I went to Brazil uh -huh. where uh, we worked on the EcoSport for uh, uh, global because it was for South America as well as Asia uh, and uh, the Figo car uh, production vehicles. Came back. I was in, uh, in. I wanted to be focused on interior, so I was on the interior program of the uh, of the F one hundred and fifty, and then ended up uh, taking over uh, exterior and interior for trucks in North America. Anything that's designed in North America that is trucks. That's very cool. So were you kind of overseeing or how involved were you with this Ford Raptor project for this next generation? Uh, both uh, overseeing as well as, uh, I mean, again, Raptor is a very exciting product. Uh, you want to, you know, it's exciting, you know, and, and especially for design. I mean, design is an emotional business. We are in the business of, of, uh, of emotions. Uh, and of course, it does not get any better than uh, Raptor. When the first generation came out, I mean, it, it really, it, it changed the paradigm for trucks. All of a sudden, you see this vehicle next to a Ford GT, mm -hmm. and it fits right in. You see it next to hyper supercars, and it fits right in. Uh, so all of a sudden, it's almost like a, it's the hyper car of trucks. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and people really took notice and, uh, and it, it became a big thing. So what are some of the key elements? I mean, I know, you know, Raptor is kind of a wide body truck, uh, mm -hmm. partially for function, right? Because you have to have these wheels that, you know, articulation and wheel travel and suspension. But what are some of the design elements that make it that hyper, hyper truck, so to, so, yeah, well, so to speak? Uh, first of all, it, it, it begins with the, with the proposition, and that is Raptor is a desert racer. So based on that, it, it's almost like half, of, half the, uh, the, the, the formula right there. Okay, what are desert racers about? You look at any one of these vehicles, they're very light on their wheels. Their uh, uh, wheels and tires are everything. They're very wide. Uh, they're very simple. How do you take all of these elements and combine them together in a, uh, in, 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 in a good package? Naturally, proportions are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, six inches wider than the, uh, than, uh, than the base vehicle, that is really cool. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but added to all of this, you know, we began with the 35 inch tires and now we have 37. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the first time uh, from an OEM that they would do a, a, a tire that size. And again, it, it's sort of like back to that original proposition that it's a desert racer. So uh, beginning with the wheels and tires in place, you begin to look at how do you actually inject a bit more of that. If you look at the body side of the new Raptor, they got this undercut, sculpted undercut on the front and rear fender mm -hmm. that kind of whisks away toward the rear, sort of like, uh, like it's sort of like flying through the desert. Uh, really nicely sculpted to give it that feel of uh, agility and the feel of, uh, of, of, of lightness on its wheels, like I was saying. 37 inch tires, that is abs an absolute blessing. Um, for, for a then designer. You come to, for, oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and for functionality. I mean, it's, uh, what's really great about the, the, the Raptor is that it's all about function. Okay. Form follows function. Mm -hmm. That makes my job a lot harder. But the outcome becomes much more holistic and much more uh, loved and cherished by the customer. Because nothing on there is uh, is done frivolously for, you know, because eh, it looks good. No, no, we're not about it looks good only. Mm -hmm. Looks good is a must, but functionality is just as important. So you're talking about, you know, the hood, the kind of the vents, right? Absolutely. Kind of every, all the features of that. Yes, yeah. So so even though the, the, the hood that you mentioned is wonderfully sculpted, but it is functional and it serves a purpose. And, and, and that to me is, uh, is, uh, is, is a winning formula. Yeah, with, with the latest one, if you look at the front end, for example, we opted not to uh, interrupt the grill and to push it as wide as we can. So it goes from headlamp, headlamp to headlamp. Even the FORD on the front is much stronger and potent now. And uh, all of that is accentuated by the, uh, the lighting technology, that turn signal, that's the upside down L shape. The, uh, the three marker lights, which Raptor is known for, are now, they're not just these Christmas light bulbs, they are actually um, LEDs that are thin and, 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 and wide, making it much more characterful when you see it in your rear view mirror. Yeah. And of course, you know, there's a bumper, uh, the underbelly, right? The skid plate, yes. yeah. skid plates, everything. And, and if you notice, even that is much wider now. So everything is sort of like linear and, and, and to accentuate that sales proposition, which is it's a desert racer. So we talked about the first generation, the original truck that was about what, 2010 or 2009 through 2014. Yeah. That was kind of the first generation of the Raptor. Then in 2017 model year, the second generation came out, right? Yes, yes. Um, so that was, uh, it's finishing up now. So mm -hmm. it's basically done. And now the third generation comes in. And if I look at the second generation and the, and the third, this new truck, um, it seems more like an evolution. Um, you know, before the truck was debuted um, and I was very fortunate to be there in person. So thank you very yes. much. Um, the, I was trying to imagine what the next Raptor would be like, right? So, but, but talk to me about, you know, it seems, first of all, recognizable as a Raptor immediately, but uh, it doesn't seem like a huge departure as far as kind of the feeling of it from the second generation. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, we are looking at every detail and honing in every detail to make it look as premium as the price that, uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of the vehicle. Uh, premiumness is, is uh, key. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, you come back to the, to, to, uh, you know, to, to, to the basics, if you will, uh, and, and that proposition about being a desert racer. Uh, mm -hmm. What are those elements and how do we integrate them in a uh, in, in sort of a new uh, package? 
a, a beautiful thing about these products are they really need to be seen in their natural habitat. And that is uh, the street and the desert and in, 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 in under you know, the beautiful skies and, uh, and, and all the surrounding with the reflections reflecting on the vehicle. Uh, that's where they really come to life. When I first started in design, we had uh, an older designer who I, who I felt like a mentor. And, uh, and uh, there was a vehicle that had come out and I'm asking him, well, what do you think of that? He goes, well, I have not seen it. Uh, I only seen it in pictures and I cannot make a judgment on design until you actually see it in person. Mm -hmm. uh, cars and trucks in their natural habitat, if the designer had done their job right, they look fantastic. And all of that is accentuated by the width and the and that we are, that we have and uh, and the technologies and the uh, the right size tires and where the tires are at side to side, as well as uh, the wheelbase itself. All of that combined uh, equates to a uh, I think a great product. Yeah. Let's go inside. For a moment so yes so how does the inside uh what were some of the inspirations i guess or also functional elements uh, of the interior interiors are very 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 important uh for us and 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 you notice uh you know even other oems they they are focusing on on that uh even with the current raptor i mean you look at that interior and it looks very exciting, even though it's been a while, it still looks modern. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we do uh, the next one? With interiors, uh, unlike the exteriors, if you will, there are so many technologies and uh, of course the colors and the materials and, the, uh, and how do you integrate all of that together, combining the safety and, and the ergonomics in a package that looks exciting. You notice, for example, the, uh, that, that, uh, uh, the 12 inch screen mm -hmm. uh, and it is in a uh, landscape, not a uh, portrait. It's, it's uh, horizontal, not vertical. Yeah. All of these are, are done for, for functional reasons that it was almost like a heresy when we took a, uh, uh, an interior with a vertical screen to our truck customers. Uh, our truck customers uh, for Raptor or for F-150 based, they are more, they are more in tune with the horizontal screen. And, and it's really interesting because from a, from a user standpoint, we're able to create a ledge underneath the, uh, the screen. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're driving through the desert, you can actually lean your hand on, on that ledge as you use the, the buttons and, and uh, the, the, the screen itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there's even a reason for that. But from a packaging standpoint and adding the, uh, the, the colors and the materials and the leathers and the, uh, and, and, and the uh, we call it, it's called spinel, the, 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 the decor elements, that red uh, that's on the end of the, of the IP that encompasses the American flag Mm -hmm. uh, all of it, is, I think, is beautifully integrated. Yeah, and so, of course, uh, of course, you, you cannot miss the uh, that, that shifter. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great comments for uh, on that shifter, actually. Yeah. So first, so I got I was fortunate enough. I was actually saw the first truck. Right. I mm -hmm. actually got inside of it, and uh, actually, we do have a long term truck, the second generation, twenty twenty. Uh -huh. Um, we're fortunate enough to actually uh, purchase it for a long-term mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. test. Uh, so we have that. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've spent some time in it. I'm used to kind of, you know, the steering wheel, the paddle shifters, right? Yes. You know, that kind of, um, it, it feels quite premium. Um, and it also, um, you know, it's not a sports car, but it has that kind of feeling where you can kind of go on a twisty road and actually be comfortable and confident. But then I got into this new truck. So I noticed a few things. First of all, the steering wheel, once again, it felt really large. I mean, the, the, mm. the diameter of the steering wheel felt big mm. and 
kind of really substantial. Yeah, built and then for there's also, yes. Um, are you calling this kind of red or orange accents? Yes. What, what color is that? Uh, it, it, well, first of all, it's not it's not a paint. It's a, it's an actual finish. Uh, yeah, we have uh, what is it? Uh, well, I was talking about the stitching. Also, I was also the stitching, noticing, you know, well, the yes. stitching and the accents. Yeah. In the in the interior itself. Yeah. Coordination and that's all all coordinated together to create a, a you know a holistic uh, product rather than you know it, it's obviously it's designed by a team that worked together you know uh, sometimes you look at some products out there and it looks like okay it's, uh, for some reason that had lamp to that grill or or the uh, the fender to the door it's like two people have done it and they never talked. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 I think the the emotional uh, feel of, of that that a raptor brings. Uh, designers get very excited and they want to contribute and they want to be a part of it. Uh, and 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 a good thing is the thirty seven inch wheel. That's a good good example of that. Uh, uh, I know you uh, you interviewed with uh, with uh, Tony. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, and yes. uh, and, and he, he he mentioned he talked a lot about that. Yeah, uh, that, that's a big thing, and uh, and that goes throughout the whole vehicle, interior and exterior. Yeah, yeah. that's very interesting. How important is the steering wheel, right? Um, talk to me a little bit more, kind of like you know the interior elements of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the steering wheel, or, or in general. Well, the steering wheel, let's start there. The steering wheel is the first thing you touch when you get into the vehicle. So, so that in itself and how it feels makes a, a, a big difference. Four trucks are about built for tough. And, uh, and, and how tough can you make all of these bits and pieces? I mean, if you look at the shifter, for example, I mean, it is oversized. Uh, but to tell you the truth, and 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 believe it or not, I know you drive and uh, you 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 purchased an F one fifty with the shifter behind the steering wheel. Yes. Believe it or not, as a designer, and I think as we move forward, especially now that we have electric uh, uh, electric shifting and all of that, I think it makes sense behind the steering wheel much more than the uh, than than being on the uh, on the console. Uh, but that would have been a heresy. From a customer standpoint, no way. Uh -huh. It had to be on the console. The console. Because why, I, is, why is that? I, they love it. They, they because a lot of them they drive and they rest their arm on that uh, on that console, and their hand is on that shifter. Mm -hmm. So that feel of that shifter, it was like uh, first of all, no way, Ahab, you're not going to put that behind a steering wheel. Uh -huh. Period. No, no, you know, not, not even a discussion. That's how people, you know, uh, fee, uh, strongly feel about every bit and piece of uh, of an F one fifty or a Raptor. Uh, so that was that. But you look at it and you feel it. It, it could not be on any other vehicle than a truck. And all of it is accentuated and enhanced by this experience of that shifter kind of going out of the way to provide room for the uh, for the uh, riding and 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 lunch table that mm -hmm. flips from the uh, from the console. Uh, by the way, all of that stuff is not a designer's dream. It is actual. It's based on actual researches that we've done. Uh, we spend uh, numerous hours and days with uh, with actual uh, customers uh, in Colorado as well as in Texas uh, to understand what uh, what are their pain points, what are they looking for, and 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 based on all of that, you have the in onboard generator, you have that shifter, uh, you have the uh, the the table, the the foldable table. Uh, you have that steering wheel and what's on it. Um, you have that uh, max recline seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it business class because it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
it's more like first class even for 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 a truck i mean uh, truck interiors came a long way and they're still going to continue and and i think we're in a good position with the uh with the f-150 and the raptor yeah because it was interesting you mentioned you were working on the first super duty interior yes right and that was and that was kind of a, yeah how did that evolve you remember right? that you, do you remember <laughs> that one yeah, I do. I I, yeah, I yeah. haven't owned or I haven't really, you know, spent a long time in one, but uh-huh. I've seen several friends, you know, with those trucks. Um, and I mean, interiors have kind of a, a long way. A very long way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And they continue to evolve. I, I, I do believe, I think the the next revolution in car or truck design is in the interior for reasons I just mentioned, technology itself and, and, and what's coming into the vehicle. I mean, now the F-150 comes with uh, o- over the air updates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's only the beginning, you know, you, 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 know, you, you know, autopilot and, uh, and, and at one point, everything is gonna be autonomous. All of these require certain, you know, thinking and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and design and uh, integration for safety and, uh, and, and ergonomics and, and so on and so forth to accommodate for, for these new technologies. So I, I think there's gonna be even more, uh, but uh, I, I love that the, 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 I, the, the, if I look at the F-150 and, and the Raptor and our trucks in general, we are on, the, I believe we are on the forefront of that. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, it's very interesting. I mean, uh, right now, I mean, the Raptor is a performance vehicle too, right? So yes. part of that is actually driving, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the beauty of it is actually the person is involved. So I imagine, I mean, talking into the future, if, if it's, it is a fully autonomous, I'm not talking about the Raptor, I'm talking about in general, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I imagine you know, your world, your, your mind is exploding with, you know, how do you design an interior that's interesting, right? And it's also usable, maybe if the steering wheel is gone, but how many, I mean, we're not close to that yet, are we? I mean, it's still like a decade or maybe more away, it, it, or how does that work? It's just, it, it just a wonderful challenge, that's all. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 you look around and, and, and all the media, I mean, they, you know, anything you read, there's hardly anything about cars without mentioning autonomous. Uh, uh, so uh, you can't say it's not coming. It is. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, so it's it's a wonderful challenge for a designer. It is. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then there's other, you know, companies who are doing, they're changing in the shape of the steering wheel, right? Maybe the steering wheel disappears or, it, you know, goes in and out or something else, you know. Yeah, I imagine yeah. that that's a lot of different challenges mm-hmm. and also kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah, sky is the limit. It's it's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so what were I guess some of the challenges with this new Raptor, um, or how did you take some of the elements I guess from previous generations forward? It, it's focusing on 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 what we're proposing. Uh, it's focused now, especially more so than the first generation. I mean, the first generation was, uh, uh, we know where we're going. There it is. And it made a, a, a huge impact in the marketplace. And, and again, I, I really believe this. I already said it to you. Uh, uh, the paradigm has shifted and it's not going back. Taking these into the second generation where it evolved into a, a, a much more muscular vehicle that sat upright, it's, uh, it, uh, it is a, it's still a, a very beautiful product, but uh, you come to this one and it's like, okay, let's focus here. Uh, what is a desert racer and how do we inject that into it? not only from a visual standpoint, but also from the functionalities and thus the 37 inch tire. Uh, Tony Greco uh, was like, uh, he's the one, the first one that pitched that to me. And it was like, uh, wow, I, I held on to that one until it came to pass because you know, it was gonna be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, usually, 
and I, I want to get your perspective on this. Um, usually, just visually, when you come up to the side of a, any truck, mm -hmm. the larger the wheel, the proportion kind of seems to make sense. Yeah. So if you put a, a tiny wheel on a on a large vehicle, yes. it yes. just doesn't it doesn't seem you know quite right. No. No. Yeah. So and 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 having that large tire, I mean, naturally, uh, the 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 packaging of it and how do you do the uh, the wheel lips, the plastic uh, wheel lips that we have on the truck. How do you integrate that and make sure it doesn't look oversized or awkward? Uh, so so uh, all of this together with the functionality, I think we we. Uh, uh, but the, but the, the, that's me, and I'm very biased. I love it. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> so so then, can I turn uh, just one more? So another question about the rear of the truck. Yes. Speaking about the Raptor. So now it kind of has the signature, like you know, applique right on the tailgate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, the dual pipes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's now a signature. How did that come about? You know, kind of the the two exhaust pipes coming out? Uh, again, it has to do with function, uh, especially for that vehicle. And, uh, and, and, and I can't say uh, aesthetic, uh, you know, aesthetics didn't play a part of it because uh, it, it is aesthetically more pleasing. <laughs> you, you want those, uh, those two, uh, two exhaust pipes. Um, and having that symmetry makes a big difference. At the same time, it's not stylized. These are functional parts and, and they look that way and they're there to serve a purpose. They're not just there for, for yeah, because uh, we think it looks right that way. No, 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 it, it looks right and it, uh, it, it functions right. And also the tail lamps. I mean, we talked about the headlamps with the, uh, with the three marker lights and the, uh, and the upside down L-shaped turn signal. I mean, those are gonna be you know, you'll see it in your rear view mirror when a Raptor is going to, you know, is, is zipping by you. Uh, and, you know, you know, he's going to know what it is. Um, on the rear, the tail lamps as well with the, with, the, with, the, um, with the LED lighting and the technology around the LED lighting in the back that it's lit up homogeneously. Uh, and the markers that are on the rear because uh, uh, those, uh, uh, those markers are on every corner on the four corners of the vehicle. Uh, that also accentuates the, 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 uh, the Raptor from the rear, yeah. So um, what's kind of next? I know you probably can't say, I mean, where you guys are going necessarily, but um, I've noticed, especially with uh, the new Ford Bronco that's coming out, it seems like modul modularity kind of makes sense. You know, it's almost like, it's almost, almost like your vehicle is kind of like a Lego, set, you know, yeah. where you can kind of, you know, modify it, customize yeah. it, yeah. Um, yeah. change it. Does that play into trucks, especially this this one? It 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 it, it all depends. I mean, they, they, we we do have different customers. Uh, there's a different landscape for each one of these vehicles, and uh, and by all means, the the brand is gonna play an important part in all of that because. Uh, each one fits in a different place in the customer's heart. And I'm, I'm saying heart, not mind, because it is emotional. It is. Get it. Uh, so, so, so each one, uh, it, 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 has to, it, it has to fit in its own surrounding, uh, but in underneath an umbrella that is, uh, that is Ford. Yeah, the, the modularity on the uh, on the uh, uh, Bronco plays an important part, and I think that team had done a, a wonderful job in in doing it in in, in such a simple way, and uh, and offering the the experiences and and the simplicity for that product that I I think is going to make it a huge success. I mean, it didn't come out yet, but Everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great, um, and uh, you know, for Raptor, it's a different customer. It fits a different, you know, it, it fits somewhere else uh, within the Ford lineup. So it uh, it it uh, it answers different.
questions that the customer asks. I gotcha. So I wanted to kind of wrap up the discussion with the family of trucks question. Yeah. So you have the F-150 uh, Raptor, yes. you have the Super Duty, and then you have the Ranger, right? Um, so I think what in the past, just looking kind of where it's been, um, especially the Super Duty versus F-150, uh, what you have done is you kind of differentiated them, right? Mm -hmm. a, a bit more oh, yes. um, than, than ever, maybe than ever before. Um, but tell me about some of the decisions there. I mean, because you need to know that each truck is a Ford, right? But they're not cookie cutter, you know, Russian nesting dolls of each other, right? <laughs> They yes. have their own. Yeah. They have their own kind of identity. How do how do you do that? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> um, uh, it, 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 yeah, the, you talk about cookie cutters, and 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 there were companies in the past that you know you, you see all their vehicles from far away. Is that uh, that one, or is it the other one? Uh, we wanted to make sure that does not happen. And, uh, and and uh, and 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 you will see that in in in, in the trucks, uh, and uh, the the overall umbrella is about built for tough, uh, and uh, and 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 maybe certain cues like the drop down built, for example, mm -hmm. that drop down built is uh, is a big one because uh, it's functional, but you know it's an F-150 or a Super Duty from very far away. So you're talking about the front window? Uh, the, no, no, the, you know, the side, uh, the side window where it drops down, uh -huh. you know, yes. uh, that's to, to see things, you know, it's, it's for safety. Um, when we were working on the F-150 that had just come out, we have done a couple of proposals where we changed that a bit. And, and to me, I felt that maybe changing it is better because to me, I associate it with something that, uh, that looks uh, maybe newer because I've been looking at the other one, you know, for so long. Uh, again, it was one of those things that was like more almost heretical to, uh, uh, to, to change because looking at that, uh, that one theme that we were showing and 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 the competition you know uh, they looked at it and said well that's not safe hmm. so the, in in the customer's mind they associate our our details with the, with with functionalities and uh, and they love us for that and and to tell you the truth with any design it's uh, uh, it's like a, a love mark okay uh, you gotta love it, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and with love, it's a two-way street. In this, in in this, in, you know, in, in this place, it's the customer and the company. We listen to the customer and we react, and uh, and they reward us by uh, making us the top-selling vehicle for forty-four years. You know, mm -hmm. that's great, great. That's very interesting. So, so yeah. So, I mean, each truck has its own kind of character, but then, but then there's a common theme, right? There is something that's connecting them, yes. basically. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. So, have you driven the new Raptor yet? Have you have you went out there in the new? Oddly enough, no. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> very soon, though. That's in the plan. Okay. They well, are re they're very wanted, and, and and naturally to get it to production, there's a lot of uh, things that need to be done, uh, you know, to, to make sure it's right. Uh, so so they they they're not out in the wild yet. Okay, well I cannot uh, but, wait. But obviously, coming. hopefully you and I will be able to go for a drive together, eventually. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. In one of these trucks. Yes. So. <laughs> So yes. you have, um, thank you for joining our uh, episode of TFL Talking Trucks. It was great to talk to you. Um, as always, I learned, thank you. I learned a lot. Uh, th thank you for having me. This, uh, this is, a, 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 I'm, I'm very proud now that I had this experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as, as always, guys, uh, tfltruck.com, of course, tfloffroad.com, because offroading is ever more important. 
uh, kind of the lifestyle and uh, we have uh, coverage of all the latest trucks and of course uh, the Raptor is is right there uh, right there with us so thank you